In this video I'm going to show you how you can use item parceling in structural equation modeling SEM or in confirmatory factor analysis CFA. First we address the question what is item parceling, then we look into why item parceling can be useful, and then, and that will be the largest part of this video, we look at the different methods for item parceling. What is item parceling? Item parcels are combinations of items. So in a way they are mini scales. You take two or more items, calculate the mean and include this mean instead of the different items in your SEM or CFA model. So we have a construct with nine items and instead of including those nine items in the measurement model for this construct, we combine those items into parcels. So here we would have three parcels with three items each. Why should we do that? Item parceling reduces the number of items. That has the consequence that a smaller sample size is possible. Because we get a better, that is a smaller item to sample ratio. We will get fewer model fit problems. We can expect fewer cross loadings. That is, fewer items loading on two or more latent constructs. We can expect fewer error covariances. We will have a higher item reliability and we will have a higher communality, that is, the items will share more variance with each other. There are some limits of parceling. If you want information on the item level, then parceling isn't the best solution for you. And that's especially the case if you run a CFA for scale construction, because there you're interested how the different items for the scale behave. And you can see this with item parceling. So I think item parceling is much more popular for SEM where you're more interested in the relationship between the latent variables than with CFA. It is kind of controversial if parceling helps or hinders when it comes to the detection of bias. If you want to know more about the different arguments about parceling, there are some sources for you. Little et al., which gives a very good overview about the parceling controversy, and Remtula, with the quantitative analysis of this problem. You'll find the references in the description of this video too. So, which parceling method to use? In general, ideally you use three parcels, because a measurement model with three items is just identified. Parcels don't have to contain an equal number of items. So let's say you have seven items, then you would use one parcel with three items and two parcels with two items each. And it is possible that a parcel contains only one item. So let's say you have five items, then you would use two parcels with two items each and a parcel with only one item. In that case, the parcel with one item should get the item with the highest quality, that is, with the highest item scale correlation. When it comes to parceling method, we first have to look at the construct. Do we have a unidimensional construct? So all items measure more or less exactly the same, or do we have a multidimensional construct? That is, do we have subfactors or facets? First, we look at a unidimensional construct and the parceling schemes we could use there. We could use simple random parceling, that is, that is, we let chance decide which items go into which parcel. This is quite problematic. I wouldn't recommend using this method because with different random allocations, you could get quite different results, even for your structural model later on. There's a second possibility for random parceling that is repeated random parceling. So you have not one random allocation but maybe a thousand random allocations. Then you run your model, your SEM or CFA for each of those, for instance, thousand random parceling schemes. And in the end you pool the results. If you want to do this in R, there's a function parcel allocation in the package SEM tools that allows you to do that without having to program this random allocation yourself. There are assumptions for random parceling. You have to have a true unidimensional scale. You have many items and those items have high communality. Different parceling methods for unidimensional scales would be a balancing approach. Here you would put the item with the highest item scale correlation together with the item with the smallest one and so on. Then there are content-based parceling schemes. Here you would put items that share a co error covariance in the same parcel. So here items 
x4 and x8 would go into one parcel, and that would result in the error covariance vanishing, because now they are part of one parcel. If you have two or more items with cross-loading to another factor, you could put them in separate or in the same parcel, depending on the signs of the cross-loadings. Here we have two items, x2 and x5, with a positive cross-loading to factor 2. In this case, we would put those items in different parcels, thereby attenuating the cross-loadings. Now we have an example where x2 has a positive cross-loading and x5 has a negative cross-loading on factor 2. In this case, we would put those two items in the same parcel, so that they cancel each other out when it comes to this cross-loading. Based on what information could we do that? We could use other studies, or we could run a multivariate CFA on the item level, that is, without parcels. Multivariate CFA means we put in all constructs of our analysis and not only just one construct. Next, to parceling with a multidimensional scale. There are two possible ways to do that. The first is facet representative, that is, we want parcels that represent one facet, that is, one subfactor of our construct. Here blue represents the variance that all items share, that is, the variance of our construct, and the other colors represent variance specific to facets or subfactors. And with this facet representative parceling, we put all items that belong to a specific subfactor into one parcel. The advantage of that, the factor only contains construct level variance and not facet or subfactor variance as well. We use it if there is no relationship between a facet and a different factor, or a facet and a facet of a different factor. Let's look at the reason for that. In factor analysis, a factor is calculated by using shared variance, that is variance that is shared between more than one item. Here our parcels are the items, and if we look at the subfactor variance, it's only in one parcel each, so it's not a shared variance. The variance of this subfactor is only in the first parcel, and since it's only in one parcel, it won't go into the estimation of the latent construct. So therefore, we get a pure latent construct not containing the subfactors. We can use this if other constructs in our model have only a relationship with our latent variable, and we shouldn't use it if other factors have a relationship with some of our subfactors or facets as well. So in this case, we shouldn't use this approach. The second possibility, domain representative parceling. With this parceling scheme, we want parcels that represent the scale in its totality. So here, we try to put items of all subfactors into each parcel. Advantage? In practice, that's a much easier approach because you get fewer fit problems, especially fewer cross-loadings. But in theory, it's not as good as the other one because now we have subfactor based elements in our estimation for the latent variable. So we only use this if there is a relationship or we expect a relationship between a facet and a different factor. Again, why is that the case? If we look at the first subfactor, we have items from the first subfactor in each parcel. So this is shared variance between all items and therefore it will go into the estimation of the latent construct. One additional thing to keep in mind if you use parceling is how to look at model fit. The recommendation is not to use the CFI if you use parceling. So from the standard fit indices, you should prefer RMSEA and as RMR. For, for more information about that, you could look into the references I put in the description. So that's it for item parceling. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.